One of the great surprises was the amount of resources that were available to you to help you get started with farming. Thanks for having us here this morning, Penny, at your property, Yambawuta. Can you tell us a little bit about your property? Sure, Eloise. <laughs> well, thank you for coming out here. We've got a 600-acre um, property that is up near Lostock Dam. Um, we're about 18 k's from Gresford, and we bought here probably about nine years ago. So prior to that, we were on the Allen River, and now we're on the Patterson River. So um, we were very fortunate in that uh, we came to the area, um, I was actually going to breed horses and I've ended up breeding cattle uh, and loved the area, um, loved the valleys uh, and um, this property came on the market, it's a generational family farm, had lovely bones and we just thought we're ready to take that next step. So. Here we are, we've been here for about nine years now. I have about 200 head, um, Angus, beef cattle. Uh, we've got uh, you know, cows and calves, and now I've started breeding bulls, so I'm going into that next step with, um, uh, with the cattle. And uh, we've got some horses here, and Tess. Um, <laughs> so we've got, um, you know, it's been just a lovely, um, experience in farming and I think originally we thought uh, you know we really wanted a family gathering place something that the kids um, you know would enjoy I always think um, country people are very grounded and I think that's always a, um, a big plus uh, for kids uh, that were originally brought up in the city and they're vet now very country. Yes it definitely <laughs> is a beautiful lifestyle out here. Mm. What were your main goals when you took over the property? What did you see as the future for Yambawuda? As I said before, it had the bones, but it needed um, money spent on it. Just to do improvements, it didn't really have a sort of laneway system. The, um, so for ease of management and cattle movement, uh, I wanted to bring that in a, a bit more. And we also had, um, you know, these wonderful river flats. Um, and they had been producing some lucerne in, in some of the flats, etc. So we wanted to maximise the potential of the flats. Um, and by doing that, we started doing, uh, putting up electric fencing and fencing them in, and um, uh, so I could do cell grazing. Because we have to cross the river, the river can be challenging. It's wonderful, it's the lifeline of this property. And I think, you know, that was always one of the big attractions to um, this area, it are the river systems. For me, I love the hills as well. You know, because I was new to farming, or it was sort of, you know, it was later in life for me, um, I, I ended up going to a lot of, uh, I think I've gone to nearly every program that's been running. So through the local land service, also through Angus Australia, etc. I've been to some wonderful programs. And out of all of them, I've sort of picked up snippets. There's always something that you can add um, or, or use, and it's just wonderful knowledge to have. So the cell grazing just made sense to me. Um, and essentially you're looking at um, uh, being able to create the size of the cells using electric tape to whatever size herd you're running at the time on that flat and using the cattle to work the ground. They're, they're in a um, smaller area so that they're not just spread out, picking out all the best bits of grass and then going back to those bits and not giving them a chance to regrow. Because you've got them sectioned, you then move them to the next section. And so that area they've just been on has longer to rest and, um, and recover. So it's a, this is what I refer to as sustainable grazing, um, in that you're looking after the land that you've been blessed to have and, and use. Have you noticed some production benefits since you've started using the cell grazing? I've definitely been able to increase my herd size. 
Um, I think also uh, you have a sense of like you always can see that you've got feet ahead of you. So that's what, um, you know, is a, an enormous benefit um, because I think if you've let them go over, you know, one of your bigger paddocks, then it's like, okay, what, where's next for them? Um, and if you've got, which I have at times now that I've got some, um, doing some bull raising, we've got, we've got to manage more herds and, and um, it's just having the room to move and manage that. So your river flats are your main productive area. Have you done any pasture improvement in those areas? We were fortunate that the flats had been, quite a few of them had been cultivated. So I do have at, at times prairie grass pops up in spring, which, you know, is a um, lovely, unexpected surprise originally. <laughs> um, but, you know, we do do multi-species. I've got an agronomist that does um, help me with a lot of the... Um, planning for the property and in this area they talk about the winter feed gap. Um, fortunately because of the flats I don't really have it. I really um, am fortunate in that I can, I, I've got flats that I can produce hay and silage in the summer to have available for winter and for supplementation in winter and then um, so I'll have some flats that we will sow down early because they don't have the kaikuyu in them and they can, I can sow them early. And um, so usually that they, they'll have a clover base already. And now we're moving on to the hills. So um, as you can imagine, all of this takes time. And uh, so with the hills, we're putting in um, lots of fences um, to bring down the sizes of the paddocks. It's onwards and upwards, we're still going. There's still areas um, that I need to um, address, but um, we're getting there nine years later. <laughs> Slow process. Can you tell me a bit about um, your stock watering system? With your cell grazing, do you have water troughs in every paddock or how have you set up that system? We pump water up from the river to a tank on the hill and then it, it gravity feeds down to the troughs um, and that works well. And then in other areas, um, I've, I've had to I do smaller sections that the cattle will go to the river to water. We have plenty of trees, shelter trees, and I think that's just so important, for, especially for, for black cattle. Um, and again, that was lucky that, you know, this property had plenty of trees and we're, we've been adding a few more, so, um, and, and we've come across all these remnant, beautiful 200-year-old rainforest trees. So, um, you know, it's, it's a, it's a, we're very fortunate. It's a lovely property with lovely bones. I, I think I um, had a lot of friends that were on the land and, and I now have a much greater appreciation for <laughs> what they do because you're a vet, you're a, an economist. Well, you, you actually look after the soil and the future. So, you know, I have a, a, a better admiration for people on the land and um, there is so much support. And I think that's what I didn't realise as well. So not only with with the courses that are available, etc., but um, also, um, you know, the, the district vet, etc. You know, a, amazing resources of people around and obviously other farmers in the area. Nearly everyone that you speak to is trying to help look after the land and our rivers and our waterways, and they're all trying to improve it. So I think we're very blessed in this country. We have a lot of support to do that. <laughs>